Hello and welcome to this tutorial where I'm going to show you how to use Puppet Warp in Photoshop. We're going to start by separating out this woman from the background so she's at the present jumping in the middle of some sky so I need to separate her away from the sky and for that, to do that, I'm going to use the Magic Wand tool. So I've selected the Magic Wand tool I'm going to go to the new selection button up at the top a sample size of 5x5 five five average means I won't accidentally click on a rogue pixel. And we'll see how it goes with a tolerance of 20. OK, so that's selected about half the sky. I'm going to click on the Add to Selection button now and click on the bottom half and just keep adding to the selection until it covers the entire sky. Now I've done that, I can inverse the selection by going to Select, Inverse. That leaves me with her selected. So I'm going to go to Copy and paste her in. And you'll see in the Layers panel down here that I've now got a version of her which is separate from the sky. I'll just hide the background and you can see she's got a tiny bit of a blue outline around her but that'll be fine because she's going to be moving against the sky. So now what I need to do is to remove her from the background so that there's just sky where she is at present. So I'm going to load the selection by clicking on layer 1, the layer 1 thumbnail while holding down the command key on the Mac or the control key on the PC. And there we have the selection, but I've got the background, I want the background selected. And I'm now going to fill with Content Aware Fill, but before I do that, I'm just going to extend, expand the selection. So I'm going to go to Select, Modify and Expand. And I'll expand by about 10 pixels. That just gives a bit of space around the edge so that Content Aware Fill gets a sense of what I want to fill with. So now to Content Aware Fill, so I'm going to go to the Edit menu and select Fill. For Contents, Content Aware. And this bit is just like magic. I hope. There we go, she's gone. So I'm going to deselect and there you have a background that is just sky. And on top of that I've got this woman completely separated out so that I can now move her around. So I'm going to select layer 1 now and this is the layer I'm going to apply the puppet warp to. Now before I do that, in order to protect the original I'm going to make it into a smart object. So I'm going to go to the layer, smart object and convert to smart object. That way, if I apply the Puppet Warp and I decide I've made a mess, I can always go back and change it. So now, I'm going to go to the Edit menu and select Puppet Warp. And what you'll probably see is this rather scary looking mesh. Whether you see that is dependent on this little checkbox up here, Show Mesh. You see I can turn that on and off. But now the mesh is in, you've got to treat this a bit like a puppet. So, in other words, a puppet has joints. So your starting point is to put in your joints, or add in your pins, as they're known. And you do that simply by clicking roughly where you think the joints are. So I'm putting them in, as you can see, whether her wrist, her elbow, and her shoulder here. And then the same on her other arm. If I wanted her head to move, I'd need to put one in her neck and one maybe about there where her forehead is. And I'll just show you how this is going to work. So once I've put these in, I can then select a pin and move it. And notice how when I move her head, the bottom of her body is also moving. If I don't want that to happen, then I'd need to pin the rest of her body. So I'd add some pins here at her hips and her knees roughly and her ankles. And now let's see what happens when I move her head. You can see I'm moving her head and the rest of her body is, set, is remaining still. I can also now, I could move her arm 
can see there's a bit of a curve that develops, which you wouldn't have with your elbow. But for small adjustments, this is really very useful. Let's have a go at moving her leg. So this is the kind of tool you could use if someone's just got their head tilted and you want to straighten it up. Or you can also use it uh, to change the width or depth of something. You can see here I could just make her waist a little larger or a little smaller. And if you wanted to move, if I wanted to move her whole leg, I'd have to select two pins. So I could click on the bottom one, then click on the next one up, and now I can move both at the same time. And you can see that that then gives me much more scope to move larger parts of her body. Once you're finished, you can see that up at the top, you can click the tick. So commit the puppet warp, or, or you can press enter on the keyboard. And that then means I've got the new version of this woman with the changes that I've made applied using Puppet Warp. However, in the Layers panel, you'll see that I've still got Puppet Warp listed as a separate entity to the original. And so I could, in fact, hide that. And you can see the differences, the changes that I've actually made. So that's the original woman, and that's her adjusted. And if I wanted to go back in and make some other adjustments, I'd just double click Puppet Warp in the Layers panel and you can see I'm back in to the Puppet Warp and I could then adjust, make another adjustment. And again, click the tick. So I hope you found that useful and enjoy using Puppet Warp.